18 Examples of Royal Hypocrisy the Public Can't Stand Have you ever felt like the royal family doesn't practice what they preach? From their lavish lifestyles to contentious scandals, members of the British monarchy have frequently been called out for hypocrisy by the public over the years. The perceived contradictions between the royals' actions and their professed values, statements, and public image have led to widespread accusations of hypocrisy and double standards. Whether it's the Prince of Wales advocating for climate action while frequently traveling by private jet, or the late Queen Elizabeth preaching duty and sacrifice while younger royals appear to seek more personal freedoms, the royal family's critics have been vocal in pointing out their inconsistencies. Scrutiny over alleged royal hypocrisy has only intensified in recent years, fueled by high-profile feuds like the rifts between Princes William and Harry, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's criticism of media intrusion despite also courting publicity, and scandals like Prince Andrew's ties to Jeffrey Epstein that shattered the monarchy's carefully cultivated moral image. Here are 18 examples of royal hypocrisy the public can't stand. Number 1. Preaching environmentalism versus private jet use King Charles and Prince William have been outspoken advocates for environmental protection and combating climate change. However, their frequent use of private jets has drawn heavy criticism as being hypocritical of their public messaging. Private air travel produces significantly higher carbon emissions per passenger compared to commercial flights. This glaring contradiction between their actions and their rhetoric on sustainability has led many to accuse them of hypocrisy and lacking true commitment to the causes they publicly champion. The immense carbon footprint of their privileged travel undermines their credibility as environmental leaders in the eyes of the public. Number 2. Tradition versus Modernity The royals fiercely uphold certain long-standing traditions and customs like formal dress codes at events, the use of outdated aristocratic titles, and ceremonial practices. At the same time, they urge the public to embrace societal progress, modernity, and evolving cultural values. This dichotomy between staunchly preserving royal traditions and prodding citizens to alter their own traditional mindsets is seen by many as blatant hypocrisy. Their perceived resistance to updating or relaxing protocols that seem outmoded makes the royals appear disconnected from the realities of contemporary British society that they, in theory, represent. Number 3. Wealth Disparity as rates of poverty and economic hardship have risen dramatically in recent years across the United Kingdom, the unimaginable wealth and lavish lifestyle of the royal families become increasingly discordant and controversial. Despite the late Queen Elizabeth's reputation for stoicism and frugality, the family's riches, palaces, crown jewels, and indulgences stand in stark contrast to the strained finances of average Britons. When royals such as King Charles weigh in on the need for economic austerity, it rings hypocritically to many given that no such fiscal restrictions or sacrifices actually apply to the royals themselves and their opulent way of life. Number 4. Media Criticism versus Participation The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have vocally criticized the media and press over what they deem intrusive reporting and invasion of privacy regarding their family life. However, this stance has been labeled as hypocritical by many given their own willing participation in high-profile media projects and interviews, including a Netflix docuseries. To critics, this suggests the couple's not averse to media exposure itself, but rather seeks to control the narrative and court publicly selectively on their own terms, a blurred line seen by some as inauthentic. Number 5. Scandal versus Public Image for decades, the British royal families fastidiously cultivated a public image and perception rooted in dignity, propriety, and upholding the highest moral, ethical, and legal standards, befitting their prominent role as the nation's symbolic leadership and global ambassadors. However, scandals in recent years like Prince Andrew's confirmed ties to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein have seriously undermined this carefully manicured fiction of irreproachable integrity. Despite the palace's best efforts at damage control and attempting to distance the monarchy from the most severe allegations against Andrew of sexual impropriety with minors, the lurid Epstein Association alone broke the veneer of trustworthiness and moral authority. Many now view the house's previously projected air of purity and upright righteousness as exposed hypocrisy, 
given the sordid criminal conduct linked to the Duke of York's social circles. This perceived double standard of exempting even accused royals from full ethical accountability while demanding impeccable conduct from everyone else has fueled renewed criticism about monarchy's fundamental hypocrisy from critics. Others argue the very system that protects and elevates such figures embroiled in serial sexual misconduct allegations based solely on an archaic birthright is itself a grand hypocrisy worthy of rebuke. Number 6. Promoting Mental Health versus Internal Struggles Members of the royal family, including King Charles and Prince William, have been outspoken advocates for mental health awareness and destigmatizing issues like depression, anxiety, and emotional struggles. However, critics point to the inherent hypocrisy in this public-facing advocacy when contrasted with the reality of the immense internal pressures, constraints, and lack of emotional expressiveness traditionally expected within the royal ranks. The enduring stiff upper lip mentality and projecting an image of stoicism at all times seems paradoxical to the mental health openness they publicly promote. This apparent double standard has led to accusations that their words on psychology ring hollow. Number 7. Duty versus Personal Happiness For centuries, the royal families emphasized duty, sacrifice, and putting the institution above individual desires, a credo embodied by the late Queen Elizabeth's lifetime of service. However, this ethos of subsuming personal needs for the greater commitment has appeared hypocritical when contrasted with the modern actions of some younger royals. Prince Harry and Meghan's very public exit as working members of the firm, departing to pursue more independent and financially autonomous lives, exemplifies a seeming hypocrisy. The rejection of the very duty and restrictions the monarchy's long claim to uphold. Number 8. Family Unity versus Behind the Scenes to the public eye, the royal family cultivates an image of unity, togetherness, and putting on a unified front as the preeminent face of the British monarchy. However, long-rumored feuds, most notably the rifts between Prince William and Harry, undermine this perceived familial solidarity, revealing it as merely a projection rather than reality. The well-publicized acrimony and divisions emerging from behind palace walls render the carefully crafted depiction of unwavering family harmony and brotherhood hypocritical according to many observers. Number 9. Political Neutrality versus Influence By mandate, members of the royal family are constitutionally bound to remain politically neutral and avoid substantively weighing in on affairs of government, laws, and partisan matters. Yet critics argue their very existence, access to world leaders, symbolic gestures like clothing or jewelry choices, and private counsel to prime ministers inherently inject a degree of political influence and agenda-setting power. This alleged hypocrisy between professed neutrality and notable sway over the political realm has long been a source of scrutiny and skepticism from anti-monarchists and republicans. Number 10. Charitable Efforts versus Source of Wealth The royals are collectively patrons of numerous charities, foundations, and philanthropic causes to which they lend their name, time, and donations. However, the line of hypocrisy is drawn by those who highlight the problematic genesis of the royal family's immense generational wealth, inextricably rooted in colonial exploitation, systemic oppression, and the usurpation of resources from subjugated populations around the world during the heyday of the British Empire. For critics, this creates ethical and moral tension over the notion of donating or supporting charities while benefiting from an ancestral fortune many deem to be fundamentally illegitimate. Number 11. Criticizing Excess versus Own Spending Throughout their public lives and official duties, certain members of the royal family have occasionally voiced critiques or expressed concerns about excessive materialism, consumerism, and ostentatious spending within modern society. These sentiments, often couched in ethical or environmental terms, carry an implicit moralizing judgment about frivolous expenditures and indulgent lifestyles. However, these royal rebukes of excess often ring hypocritically when contrasted with their own lavish political expenditures on luxury goods, clothing, travels, renovations of residences, and other extravagances subsidized by taxpayer funds. The immense outlays on non-essential indulgences seem to betray the very principles they preach. For example, 
when the Princess of Wales, Catherine, laments over consumption and unsustainable retail habits. It prompts criticism as tone-deaf hypocrisy given her own massively expensive clothing budget and exorbitantly priced interior redecorating tastes exposed over the years. Royal commentators have estimated Catherine's expenditures on designer wardrobes alone top £600,000 annually. Similarly, when King Charles decrees capitalistic greed, it rings hollow given the reported £5 million plus spent updating just one of his royal residences, Buckingham Palace. Many see a disheartening lack of awareness or accountability in willfully squandering unfathomable sums on cosmetic upgrades while simultaneously condemning excessive consumption as ethically dubious. This chasm between the royals' exposed principles and their actual opulent lifestyles, enabled entirely by lavish sovereign grants from public coffers, is seen by critics as the most damning hypocrisy of all. For families of more modest means struggling with austerity, its very personification of unchecked privilege appears brazenly out of touch and devoid of personal sacrifice to match their moralizing words. Number 12. The Firm Mentality versus Individuality The royals have long stressed the paramount importance of the institutional monarchy, referring to the family as the firm and emphasizing putting its priorities and traditional protocol first. This mindset of subsuming individual identities to the collective dogma is seen by some as outmoded and hypocritical when contrasted with younger royals like Prince Harry and his wife Meghan, overtly expressing desires for more autonomy, progressive perspectives, and shedding certain outdated constraints. Their very public rejection of some customary strictures could be viewed as hypocritical to the steadfast party line about loyalty to the firm above all else. Number 13. Colonial Past versus Commonwealth Relationships As the ceremonial head of the Commonwealth of Nations, the British monarchy represents countries that were once colonized and oppressed subjects of the former British Empire. This continued relationship is seen by many as inherently imbalanced and hypocritical given the brutal colonial history, extraction of resources, and subjugation of indigenous populations under the royal family's ancestors. Whether today's royals actively acknowledge and atone for this troubling legacy has become a point of scrutiny and criticism about the Commonwealth framework's very legitimacy. Number 14. Global Travel versus Local Concerns While members of the royal family frequently embark on extended, high-profile tours and travel the globe, their public rhetoric and messaging also regularly promotes the significance of grassroots community engagement, supporting local initiatives, and focusing charitable impact closer to home. However, this messaging inconsistency regarding where royals direct their time and emphasis has fueled accusations of hypocrisy from critics. When the Prince and Princess of Wales jet off for multi-week Commonwealth voyages to far-flung locales like the Caribbean, many see a sharp disconnect from their positioning as advocates for cultivating neighborhoods and communities within the United Kingdom itself. Arguably, the royal spending prolonged stretches abroad appears misaligned with rhetoric stressing the fundamental importance of localized engagement. Beyond just the opportunity cost of where royals dedicate their in-person attention, their excessive global air travel also directly contradicts frequently espoused environmental mantras and commitments to sustainability. The sizable carbon footprint generated from crisscrossing the planet in lavish private jets undercuts their credibility when they lead public campaigns targeting climate change. So when royals ostensibly preach the principles of community building, grassroots charity, and emission reducing through green initiatives, their perpetual globetrotting and royal tour schedules smack of facilitating hypocrisy through mixed messages and contradictory actions. At its core, it highlights the tension between wanting to shape public perception through words versus substantive deeds on local and environmental levels. Number 15. Criticism of Family Outsiders When newcomers like the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle arrived in the royal family through marriage, they faced intense scrutiny, criticism, and even racially charged attacks from some quarters of the British media and public. This harsh treatment stood in stark contrast to the royal family's professed assertions about inclusivity, openness, and adherence to principles of dignity. For many, the hypocrisy laid bare how outsiders, particularly women of color, were treated differently despite stated values of universality and progressiveness within the monarchy. 
Number 16. Normalizing the Monarchy versus Inherent Privilege At times, members of the royal family have made calculated attempts to appear more grounded, relatable, or in touch with the everyday experiences of average Britons, such as the Princess of Wales being photographed shopping at downmarket grocery chains. However, critics deride these symbolic gestures as hypocritical given the simple truth that no matter how normal these fleeting activities try to make them seem, the unfathomable privilege, wealth, status, and hereditary entitlement separating royals from the masses can never be erased. The very construct of an unelected, lavishly funded sovereign family exemplifies a systemic inequity that undercuts claims of commonality. Number 17. We versus Them Mentality with extensive private security details, walled residences, affluent locale lifestyles, and preferential treatment, the royals operate within a protected bubble, separating them from the general public in ways that can breed an insular, elitist, us-versus-them mentality, according to critics. This perceived detachment from those that are meant to represent as national figureheads is seen by many as the height of hypocrisy an inability to relate to the realities and struggles faced by most citizens despite professed dedication to public service. It perpetuates a damaging hierarchical double standard in the view of certain observers. Number 18. Tax-Funded Lifestyle versus Scrutiny Because the royal family's lavish lifestyle, security, residences, and other privileges are largely subsidized by British taxpayers via the sovereign grant and other public-funded mechanisms, there is an inherent hypocrisy alleged by those who feel the royals should be therefore subject to far more scrutiny, transparency, and accountability about their spending, conduct, and personal lives than currently allowed. The perception is that by living opulently at the public's expense, the royals must relinquish a certain degree of privacy and face heightened requirements to justify their productive role, if not face consequences. This intrinsic lack of true accountability is cited as perhaps the most egregious royal hypocrisy. From preaching environmentalism while frequently using private jets, to promoting duty and sacrifice while some younger royals seek personal freedom, accusations of hypocrisy have plagued the British royal family on numerous fronts. Whether it's their immense wealth amid rising poverty, criticism of media intrusion despite also seeking publicity or their charitable efforts contrasted against the problematic colonial roots of that fortune, the perceived contradictions and double standards leveled at the royals have fueled the intense public scrutiny. Even attempts to appear relatable or stakes in political neutrality have been called into question, with critics alleging inherent hypocrisy given the monarchy's lofty privilege and societal influence. So there you have it. 18 prominent examples highlighting the divide between the royal family's words and actions that have generated fervent claims of hypocrisy in recent years. What do you think? In your view, what represents the most egregious example of royal hypocrisy from the ones covered today? Do these examples represent valid criticisms and hypocrisies, or have they been unfairly exaggerated? Let me know your thoughts on royal hypocrisy in the comments below. Be sure to like this video, share it with others, and subscribe to my channel for more insightful content examining the evolving role and relevance of the British monarchy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye!